I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I am delightful. How are you? Oh, delightful. <laughs> I like that. I'm great. Good. Yeah, it's, was today not a beautiful day? It's so beautiful. Oh, this is, the temperatures were perfect. Mm-hmm. The sun, there was a breeze. It was, it was, I wasn't outside much, but when I was, it was amazing. And that's why we live in central New York, because the weather is amazing. This is my most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> I it know is, you have is. opposite. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do. And I, something had me thinking about Christmas the other day. It's Leon Day. It's coming right up. That's... Well, it's, it's coming. Oh, it's right around the corner. <laughs> you know, and actually, I'm going to be on vacation for Leon Day. Wow. Yeah. So I can really celebrate. Man, the ultimate we can even treat. Have... <laughs> The ultimate treat, be on vacation on Leon Day. I also have a grandchild, I think, that was born on Leon Day. Mm -hmm. but, but anyways, but it's a great time of year. Um, ki you know, just the excitement in kids. My wife was telling me that um, at the school where she works, they had Water Fun Day. That's great. And there's a, there's a field out behind the district office, and they had, they had like slip and slides for the... the elementary school kids and she said even even the principal was covered was soaked from head to toe <laughs> that's great that's so fun it was great so it's that time of year and we really just need to embrace it enjoy it um because every season has its ups and has its downs and mm -hmm. one of the downs right now would be allergies my allergies are driving me crazy this season but, mm. but that will end too once the the trees are and flowers are all fully leafed out mm -hmm. so the Greatest Edge. What were your thoughts when you first saw it? This one's not that far out there. No, no, this one is not. Um, of course, unless I already know, I often wonder, you know, what was Dave thinking about? You know, what made him want to write about this? What was his motivation? <laughs> so my motivation was real easy. Um, I have a leadership, a daily... It's a, it's a leadership book, and it says Promises for Every Day. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the days, about a week ago, um, touched on this about what is the greatest edge. And, and it just kind of struck me. I read through it a few times and actually put like a little um, page finder tab or something on this just to keep going back. And I kept chewing on it for a while, and I thought it really it, – you know, everybody's looking for an edge. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so one of the things – we, we all, we're, life is filled with competition, right? Everybody's competing. Within families, we compete, even when we shouldn't. You know, um, in relationships, spouses compete, which isn't smart, but it just, it happens. Like where you're having a disagreement, you're having a conversation, or you just have to one-up each other. It's not healthy, but especially in relationships, but it is something that we just do. Um, and so I was trying to think, well, Everybody wants an edge. Everybody wants to get their product to be the one that's chosen. Everybody, you know, we're competing for employees. We may be competing for for markets, um, competing for attention, yep. to you know, visibility for organizations, and they look for these unique gimmicks. Gimmicks don't work. And and if you think about um, Simon Sinek in his book Start with Why, he talks about you know manipulation, and and. One of the problems is that a lot of the edges that people think they get are really manipulation. Manipulation doesn't build loyalty. So then we have to say, okay, what is the greatest edge? And, and in my, um, my little book here, it gave us four keys to what would be the greatest edge. The four components, personnel, vision, work ethic, and leadership. And I really believe that if you're missing any one of those, it won't work. Your organization is going to stall. So I thought what we do is we'll kind of jump into, even though I wrote about personnel and vision, I still want to talk about it because not everybody getting the podcast um, gets the email. But if you think about the people that you want, you want people, I wrote, you want people who are restless. Mm -hmm. And People may say, what? No, I don't want restless. Yeah, you want restless people. You want people that don't settle for mediocrity. You, you want people that are constantly challenging and pushing you. Because for one thing, it helps you get better as a leader. 
but I've, I've got to have these people. I need people that, that don't look at something and say, no, we can't do it. I need people that look at it and say, how can we do it? People that really believe that for every problem there is an answer. We just haven't found it yet. Now, what do you suppose are some of the drawbacks of hiring people like that and having them on your team? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I think that sometimes it can almost um, feel like, oh, this person is high maintenance or, re- or is required. Right. There's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I, I think, you know, I, I identify as a restless person. So I'm, that's why I'm laughing. Right. Um, I think you do, too. In a good way, right? It, and, it, and it reminds me of the podcast we did about, how did we word it? Was it um, productive discontent or? Um, healthy discontent. Healthy, maybe? healthy discontent. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and so having a person who is restless, actually having a team of restless people can mm-hmm. be exhausting. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it, when you get them, so if, if, the other, if the next two key po- components are in place, it's fine. So I, again, I want to find these people that are restless, people that can't stand mediocrity, people that don't say, I want to go to an okay restaurant. They're people that say, if I can't go to a great restaurant, I'll stay home. Mm-hmm. You know, if we think about how much money is spent in our country on mediocre meals, that's terrible. People should just say, no, I want something better. So that's what we're looking for in personnel. They're going to be restless. They're going to be chomping at the bit, so to speak, as a horse wanting to get out of the start gate, so to speak. Um, They also, you you want to make sure that your team has complementary skill sets. Mm -hmm. I don't need a big team, but I need a team that's big enough to cover all the skill sets I need. So as a leader, I need to really be thinking those critical thoughts like, what am I going to need to achieve my vision? Will I need, you know, um, inspirational people? Will I need people who are data driven? Will I need people who aren't willing to accept no for an answer? Will I need people that really understand what the team is thinking and value the connection between people? Now, the answer to all of those questions I just asked is going to be yes. Because that's looking at the disc makeup and get it, making sure that I've got all four of those components there. And then on top of that is now I want now I want to know aptitudes. I want to know giftedness. And sometimes you're going to find somebody who has a giftedness and is passionate about what you want, is restless, and you're not sure where to put them yet. Get them anyways. Mm-hmm. I, I had a I was doing a, a lead a leadership mastermind with a company this week. And it was interesting where the owner gave directives to the operations people. They said, we need five people. He said, get six. Don't get five. And I thought, that that leader gets it. You may take six or seven till you come up with the five that you need. And, and the other point that he was making was, you know, what do we do when somebody's sick, when somebody's out? We, we need that, that extra person. Um, we, we need to also have them be, op- be able to be open open with each other like i don't want i don't want any people anybody that's going to get hurt real easy because somebody said i really think you can do better than that or i really think that we need to try to do something different here i want people that say okay tell me what what's wrong with it help me figure it out so that's that's going to be another characteristic of these people and and the last thing here is they need to have fun working together really fun work i mean it's got to be fun because it's going to be hard the Mm -hmm. journey we're taking is going to be hard so we better have people that want to be together and have fun together the next point on vision and this one i'm not going to spend a ton of time on it because we could do a whole podcast on this and maybe we need to i know we have i think we have Mm -hmm. but we you know we may because there was a book that i told you i wanted to read again that talks about the power of the brain so we may we may come back to this toward the end of the year but too many you know there, there's the ancient proverb that says where there is no vision the people perish and i see so many organizations where there is no vision they don't know why they exist now they're going to say we make xyz products for this and this industry okay great why why do you do it 
You know, if you can't communicate the why you do what you do to your team in a vision that is compelling, how can you communicate it to the marketplace? So there needs to be this, this, the why, Simon's why, you know, this compelling need. So what is the, what is the need that your organization is uniquely built to meet? Now, notice I didn't say a want that you're built to meet, to meet, but a need. So there's going to be something out there. Tap into that and then find a way to get your team to buy into it. Now, one of the things that we know when we, from Simon Sinek's teachings on Start With Why, is that loyalty is, is built when we communicate with the limbic part of the brain, that part of the brain that's responsible for all the decisions we make and all the feelings we have, but is incapable of words. And if people say, what do you mean? And I'll just, and if they're, <laughs> you know, let's say if they're married, I'm going to say, tell me the day you fell in love with your spouse. And I, I did have somebody one time say, I can tell you like, okay, fine. Tell me the day. Most people can say, can never say, I'll tell you the day. I can tell you the day I noticed my wife for the first time, mm -hmm. but I can't tell you the day when I realized I loved her because it was something that grew over time. All of a sudden you're like, wow, there's something here. It's the same thing with our visions. It's, it's the limbic part of our brain that we're communicating with. And so a great leader knows how to build that vision into something that the, pe that the team can hold on to. And the reason, again, for that is it's going to drive the loyalty that you need. Without it, forget it. Without it, they're going to, you know, I was, I was on the call with somebody today talking about a potential 360 for one of their employees and the 360s that I do are not cheap. I'll be right. I'll be honest with you. It takes me a full day to do them. I don't do online fill in the blanks. These I sit down and I do interviews with people. And her comment to me was, well, I, I'd hate to invest that money and then have him leave. <laughs> and I agree with her. I, I, we need to do a lot of discussion, a lot of research before we get to that. But it shouldn't, if, if, if it's that easy for him to leave... There's no VIP buying into the vision. So that's the reality of that vision piece. So now we can get into the, um, the stuff that I didn't write about. So the next one would be work ethic. So when you hear the term work ethic, what comes to mind? Hmm. You know, I think to me, work ethic is one of those, um, speaking of the limbic system, it's hard for me to put into words. It's more of a, of a feeling. I don't know. Okay, good. Um, I like this. Or like I can think of examples, but not words. So maybe that wasn't a good question to ask me. Okay. No, but, but I think it's fine because what you're telling me is that when you, when you think of a work ethic, you're actually seeing in your mind a picture of what it looks like. Mm-hmm. And I also kind of think of things that it's not too, um, and okay. that it, you know things that work ethic can sometimes be confused with. Um, but I, I don't know; it's hard to pinpoint. Yeah, you know one one definition of work ethic because I think it's a, a combination of things. And it's very and, and here's another one because when I read that 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 was the one of the things that came out out of this book. I'm like. Okay. Um, <laughs> does a person have a good work ethic? Uh, it depends on who's evaluating him, right? Right. Yeah. You know, some people would say, "Oh, he's got a great work ethic," and then somebody else that's that's got a team full of restless, high performers, like that person's as lazy as can be. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for the work to come to them rather than going to the work. And so, I dug in a little bit more to the work ethic and what I thought that would mean. And I think what the author was looking at here was um, clearly, you know, the dedication part, that's going to be in the personnel I pick. Mm -hmm. But what I got out of the, the, the work ethic part was the, um, the preparation, um, the continuation. Like I, I want people that when they come, when they can taste success, stay with it. 
Mm-hmm. I want, you know, to me, that's the work ethic. The, 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 when they under, the growth piece, you know, that growth is fun. Growth is inspiring. Growth lifts us to another level. And I want them to be hungry for more growth then. When they taste, you know, the success and the significance of what we're doing, I want it to continue in their hearts and in their minds. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be making sure that they're ready, that they have all the training they need, that they're focused. I think this still fits into this work ethic piece. You know, if everything is a priority, nothing's a priority. I love that. That's one of my favorite sayings. Yeah. If everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. I I was doing a 360 this week, a follow-up with some senior leaders, and they've got a really great manager who has really done an amazing job of changing the culture in the organization, but struggles with identifying what is the next one thing they need to work on. So then I kind of went through our, you know, how do you prioritize, you know, what's required, what gives you the greatest return, but also what gives you the greatest reward. So those are the three R's of prioritization. And I know we've done podcasts on that. So this is what's going to happen with this work ethic piece. They're going to be focused. They're going to, and it's going to, their work ethic is going to be demonstrated in some passion that they have. And the last part is leadership. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I and I think and, and this was I, I have a great you know if I could only give an ex- if I could if I could read back to our to our listeners a 360 summary that I that I did with a leader today they would know exactly what I'm talking about. This gentleman it was amazing to do his 360, and he has this beautiful combination. So one of the, one of the things that someone said in his 360, and he said that was the part that he found the most meaningful was that he is able to, to build a team and then basically let them go, so to speak. So he's, (laughs) he's, he's working in a plant that's having a tremendous amount of, of uh, construction done Yet, year after year, the plant has increased its throughput by 75 to 100 percent. I mean, they've, they've doubled their output per year type of thing. Wow. Um, he's, he's, he's able to communicate goals, mission, and vision to any employee at any level within the organization. Like, he is able to say it in a way that everybody gets it. And then a few of the people said, he has got, he has taken me to levels I didn't think I could go. And those, that's leadership right there. Mm-hmm. And he's not the guy that's standing out front taking the credit, but he's right alongside everybody that's, that's in the organization with him. And then one of the things that I found really touching was one of the people decided to write, um, he cares so much about people we had an employee pass away and just the way he made sure that the family was cared for was just so inspirational. So that's a leader. The leader's going to have a rough job because of the people that we said we're putting in there. We're putting these restless people in. So he's empowering them. He's getting, you know, he's giving, he's resourcing them. People said, oh, he just, he resources us. He helps us understand what our goals and our objectives are. He, he helps us make sure they're relevant and that they're attainable. Um, and then he gives us the tools to achieve them. Uh, it, it was like the perfect story to, to represent the leadership piece that's needed for the greatest edge. So when you have it, when you have the right people, the compelling vision, what is the problem you're trying to solve? The work ethic of the people and the right leader, you are unstoppable. And this organization's proving it. Imagine an organization that not only can produce double their output every year in the, over the last few years, but the markets are there. Mm-hmm. So they must be doing something right on the marketing side to make sure that the people the people must be flocking to their product. It's amazing. That that's the greatest edge. Mm-hmm. So how much fun do you think it would be to work on this team? What are your thoughts? If you could build that greatest edge team, what Uh, would it be like to work there? Yeah. I mean, I think it, I think it would be great. I, you know, if you've got a group of people who are, you know, 
committed and loyal and driven, restless, right? And they are, yeah, they, they've, uh, the vision has been communicated to them. They're probably re- visiting that frequently to make sure that it's top of mind. It's clear. Yep. The vision is clear. Um, it, I think it, it is enjoyable because there's, I would imagine a lot of fulfillment and, yes. and that is highly motivating and keeps, yep. you know, keeps you going. Um, I think when, when I mentioned that I, that with work ethic, there are words that I think are the opposite or mm-hmm. often confused. So I, I think, um, if you have a strong work ethic, it, it does, that is not equal to like workaholic or, you know, right. always working. Um, I think if you have a, a strong work ethic, you have a healthy relationship with yes your job and that makes work yeah, more enjoyable. And when you're working with a group of people who compliment you, um, yep. And not compliment with an E, right? Not like tell you you're doing a good job, compliment like as a complimentary yes. skills. Um, yep. That makes work enjoyable. So I, I think it'd be a great team. And especially with the example you were giving, you know, looking back at the end of the year, because we know reflection is so important to say, wow, we, you know, we did it again. We doubled our sales. Yep. Or we, this was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like that's a lot. And you know one of the one of the interesting things um, about this this leader, because he he's doing great, but yet he was looking for the nuggets mm-hmm. within the three hundred and sixty that he could build on, and he wasn't looking for successes. He goes, "Oh, that's great. I'm glad they affirmed this. I want to talk about this." Right. What did you hear about this? How, how, should I be concerned about this? He was driving himself. He was driven within himself to be better, even better mm-hmm. than he was. And I'll tell you, one of the things that he was struggling with, and it came out in his 360, was he needs a little better work-life balance. Mm-hmm. And the reason was this. Um, well, first of all, if I was my coaching client, I would say, listen, I want to know when you're taking your week off, right? Mm-hmm. But he sets, because he's so respected and admired by his team, they feel that that's the level of... I don't want to say dedication, commitment that they need to have. And it's hard for them because they may not be in the same stage of life as he is. So, and he picked up on it even before the 360, because I just reviewed the 360 with him today. And he said, well, Mm -hmm. Dave, you'll be happy to know that um, as soon as we're done with our call, I'm leaving early and I won't be back all weekend. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's behavior modeling. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I love that. So add it to this, to the list. The leader is going to model the behaviors that the team should follow. Because mm-hmm. they will follow. And you'll lose. If you model things that are unhealthy and they get it, they won't stay. Mm-hmm. So Cool. So the greatest edge. If you really want to have a greatest edge. And, and so when I talk about competition, what we want to play is in the infinite game not a finite game. So that's mm-hmm. another podcast. for some, That's not what we're going to talk about next week, but that'll be down the road. So again, we need to have the right people, truly a compelling vision, and be able to communicate it, not with flowery words that end up on slogans, business cards, or on the wall in our entrance. Something that resonates with the hearts of people. The right work ethic and exceptional leadership. And you'll be unbeatable. And I'm done. Easy enough. <laughs> yeah, it's like, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> How can that be hard? So, you want to know what we're talking about next week? Yes, that was my next question. The 10 minute timeout. Ooh. How's that? That's, I, I am interested in that. <laughs> it's really good. It was, it was something I learned this week. Wow. That I don't do. Shame on me. So it's not like we're going to give people a 10 minute timeout. Like, no, don't go sit in the corner. <laughs> 10 minutes. No, it's you have to take, and they'll explain exactly what that means because it affects everybody if mm-hmm. you do it right. So, any exciting plans for the weekend? No, just hoping to get outside. How about you? Work, work in the garden, right? Yep. 
so yeah i'm hoping to get outside um get a little bit more we're we're redoing our backyard that's taken some some effort i will say that last weekend i did go out we had dinner on the boat with some good friends of our dinner oh friends of so ours. nice the friends that took me out on the 3rd of July, the last few years. Oh, that's great. Their boat wasn't in the water yet. So we said, oh, would you like to have some pizza? So the old the old boat ran well. So it was very, very nice. I'm good. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page.